Hello everyone. Welcome back. Today we are going to learn about the structure of DNA. So as the name suggests, DNA means deoxyribonucleic acid. So when you say nucleic acids means they are polymers of nucleotides. So here the DNA deoxyribonucleic acid that means they are nothing but polymers of deoxyribonucleotides. That means in any given DNA there are many many deoxyribonucleotides. They are polymers of deoxyribonucleotides. And this DNA present in the nucleus, especially in eukaryotes. This DNA is located inside the nucleus, and there is a small amount, less than 0.1 percent of DNA also present in mitochondria. Major part of DNA is present inside the nucleus and protected by nuclear membrane, especially in eukaryotes. Since it is deoxyribonucleotide, the sugar is deoxyribose. So, in the last video, we learned nucleotides means they are made up of base plus sugar plus phosphate. Here, the base is the four main bases that is adenine, guanine, cytosine and thymine. So there is no uracil in DNA. Uracil is mainly present in the RNA. If a given DNA contains maybe 1000 or 10,000 nucleotides, but all these are made up of these four bases or they contain only these four bases in different order. So during 1944, there was a big discovery Scientists claim that the genetic information is present in the DNA. So this genetic information actually carried by these bases or determined by order of these bases. Order of these bases will determine the sequence of amino acids in a given protein. So this order is called genetic code that we will discuss in later video. So at this moment, DNA is a polymer of deoxyribonucleotides and the bases only four types, two purines and two pyrimidines and their order actually determines the sequence of amino acid during protein synthesis. We know that DNA is double helical. That means DNA present in a double helical structure. The two strands wound one over another. So, like protein structure, DNA structure can also be explained or discussed in three ways. That is the primary structure, primary structure of DNA, secondary structure and tertiary structure. So, I am going to explain the structure of DNA under these three headings. So, primary structure is mainly nothing but polymers of deoxyribonucleotides. Second structure is nothing but three dimensional structure of the DNA. Tertiary structure is nothing but supercoiling. So we will see the structure one by one. First we will see what is primary structure of DNA. So primary structure of DNA is nothing but they are polymer of deoxyribonucleotides. So like protein structure, different amino acids are joined together by a bond called peptide bond. Here exactly similar to protein structure, in DNA we have a bond called phosphodiester bond. So they joined by phosphodiester bonds. We will see in a short moment from now. The structure of nucleotide or deoxyribonucleotide we studied in the previous video presentation. So I will first draw a single deoxyribonucleotide. Then we will see how polymerization is going on. Even though DNA is a double stranded, I am explaining the primary structure of DNA taking only single strand of the DNA. So first let me draw the sugar part. So in the previous class I explained the ribose carbon number always we should name in prime number. Whereas numbering of the base we should number in cardinal numbers. Here I am numbering the carbon in prime number. So this is one deoxyribonucleotide. Here we can see the base is 
adenine. We have adenine base attached to first prime carbon number of the ribose. We can see in the second prime carbon there is no oxygen. So this ribose is deoxyribose and phosphate is attached to 5 prime carbon number. So this is our first deoxyribonucleotide, deoxyadenylate. Now the primary structure is we already written here, it is a polymer that means there is one more deoxyribonucleotide going to join here to make a bond called phosphodiester bond. So I will show how it is going to happen. So here I have another deoxyribonucleotide and the base is cytosine here. So the two deoxyribonucleotide they are going to join by a bond called phosphodiester bond. So how this bond is formed? So usually the bond is formed between hydroxyl group attached to 3 prime carbon atom and the, the phosphate group which is attached to the 5 prime carbon atom of the another deoxyribonucleotide. So they will join and form a bond. That bond is called phosphodiester bond. So it looks like this. So this is our phosphodiester bond. Okay. So this phosphodiester bond is 3 prime 5 prime. Okay. The direction of phosphodiester bond is 3 prime and 5 prime phosphodiester bond. Because the bond here is between hydroxyl group attached to third prime carbon of the first sugar and the phosphate group which is attached to 5 prime carbon of the next deoxyribonucleotide. So the direction is 3 prime 5 prime phosphodiester bond or the name of this bond is 3 prime 5 prime phosphodiester bond. So let me write one more deoxyribonucleotide. So here I have a deoxyribonucleotide where base is timing. So here the phosphodiester bond formed between hydroxyl group attached to 3 prime carbon atom of the existing deoxyribonucleotide to the incoming phosphate group which is attached to 5 prime carbon of the incoming deoxyribonucleotide. So this phosphodiester bond also 3 prime 5 prime phosphodiester bond. So like the there is continuously addition of deoxyribonucleotide and you have to remember this addition goes in this direction. So we have started from 5 prime carbon number here and this is actually 3 prime. So you need to remember in a DNA the direction of poly deoxyribonucleotide is always from 5 prime to 3 prime direction. Okay, you should not confuse for this direction. So in any given DNA, the direction of single strand is always you have to write the bases from 5 prime to 3 prime. The order of the bases always we need to write from 5 prime to 3 prime. But the phosphodiester bond formed here is 3 prime, 5 prime phosphodiester bond. So this I have written here single strand. So in a given DNA there are two strands that I will be explaining under secondary structure. So summary of the primary structure is the backbone of sugar and phosphate. You can see here sugar and phosphate. You can see this is entire thing is sugar and phosphate. Sugar and phosphate. Okay. So the sugar and phosphate actually makes the backbone of the DNA. Whereas the bases are actually they are inside. Maybe this is A, this is C and this sugar may be T. So in any given DNA the sugar and phosphate makes backbone of the DNA whereas bases are inside of that strand. So this is the primary structure of DNA. So we will see secondary structure of DNA. So secondary structure of DNA explained by or proposed by two scientists. 
that during 1953, the name of the scientist is James Watson and Francis Crick. So these two scientists during 1953, they proposed double stranded or double helical DNA structure. So that structure is actually a secondary structure of DNA and that model is called Watson and Crick double helical DNA structure. It is actually three dimensional structure. So they propose DNA is double stranded. It is not only double stranded, it is helical, a coiled structure and they are coiled around a common axis. They proposed a model where they shown that DNA is a double stranded, not only it is a double stranded, it is coiled around a common axis. So I am going to draw the structure here. So the structure of DNA according to Watson and Crick model looks like this. They coiled, there are two standards, but they are coiled around a common axis, around a common axis. And the two strands they propose, they are anti-parallel. That means one strand runs in 5 prime to 3 prime, but the another strand is 3 prime to 5 prime. So the, both the strands are anti-parallel. The meaning of anti-parallel means both strands runs in opposite direction and the each strand the backbone is sugar and phosphate. So this backbone of this double strand is nothing but we already learned this uh, sugar and phosphate, phosphodiester bond and bases are they are perpendicular to this axis of the strands they actually facing towards interior of the, this helix. So we know that bases are always attached to sugar. So imagine this is a base adenine and this may be cytosine and this may be thymine. So here there will be T, here there will be G, here there will be A. I will explain now why this like this. First we will see the second structure. So this is a double stranded anti-parallel helical structure because it is coiled around a common axis. According to Watson and Crick, the diameter of this particular DNA is, the diameter is around 20 Armstrong or 2 nanometer and the distance between two bases, here you can see the distance between two bases is 3.4 Armstrong and the Number of bases or base pairs between one complete turn, so if, if I take from here to here, the one complete turn, so there are 10 bases per complete turn of this double helix. So the distance here is 34 Armstrong or 3.4 nanometer. And also, according to them, there is two group. One is called minor group, another one is called major group. So again this is minor group. So this is what I am written here. This is a structure of B DNA. Apart from this there is also have A and Z DNA. So this is in B DNA the bases are exactly perpendicular to the sugar and phosphate backbone and in BDNA there are 10 bases for one complete turn and the both the strands are anti-parallel. So we have learnt in the secondary structure sugar and phosphate they are backbone of DNA and bases are always inside and you may wonder how these two chains are held together. The two chains are held together by a bond called hydrogen bond. So this hydrogen bond always if there is adenine base it always base pairs or it forms hydrogen bond with T. There are two hydrogen bond between adenine and thymine. If there is a base guanine it always base pairs with cytosine and the number of hydrogen bond between guanine and cytosine is 3. So we can draw here 
so you can see here cytosine and guanine here there are three hydrogen bond so that means the two strands are held together by hydrogen bond wherever there is a is there there are it always base pairs with thymine and the number of hydrogen bond is 2 okay, maybe you can imagine here there is a g so it always base pairs with c suppose here t it always base pairs with a so only the difference the number of hydrogen bond between guanine and cytosine is always 3 whereas number of hydrogen bond between adenine and t is 2 so the two chains are held together by hydrogen bonds very important feature is the base pairing is complementary so they are complementary to each other that means adenine should always base pair with thymine it cannot base pair with guanine because the number of hydrogen bond between adenine and thymine is only two so adenine is always base pairs with thymine or thymine always base pairs with adenine similarly cytosine always base pairs with guanine or guanine with the cytosine so this is the very important information in the secondary structure so whatever i have explained here numbers it is only applicable for b dna in a and z dna maybe the major group minor group and the angle between bases to the sugar and phosphate backbone everything is different even per turn number of bases may be different in this dna b dna the number of base pairs per turn is always 10 so with this we should know what is called a rule related to this base pairing it is called chergoff's rule so i will draw here a double stranded dna so this is a so this is c g this is c this is t so a always base pair with t g always base pair with c c always base pair with g t always base pair with a so the number of hydrogen bond here between a and t is only two between g and c there are three in any given base pair always purine base pair with pyrimidine you can cross check here you can see adenine is a purine it base pairs with thymine is a pyrimidine guanine is purine cytosine is pyrimidine cytosine is pyrimidine but it base pairs with purine so always purine base pairs with pyrimidine so in any given base pair one is purine base another one is pyrimidine because of hydrogen bond there cannot be base pairing with adenine and cytosine or guanine and adenine or adenine and guanine because of this hydrogen bond there is restricted base pairing there should be always complementary base pair complementary means adenine should always base pair with thymine cytosine should always make base pair with guanine why this is this is because of hydrogen bond hydrogen bond actually restricts base pairing with all the bases so one member is purine other member is pyrimidine so then if like this then if in given dna number of adenine should always equals number of thymine similarly if number of guanine should always equals with number of cytosine bases in any given dna because of this complementary base pairs and hydrogen bond restriction number of adenine is always equal to number of thymine so you can make a rule here the chergoff's rule state that the number of adenine plus number of guanine this is is should be equals number of cytosine plus number of thymine so now adenine guanine is purine cytosine and thymine is pyrimidine so the according to chergoff's rule the ratio of purine is to pyrimidine is always it should be one okay so we will see we will see take an example suppose in any given dna the total number or percentage of cytosine okay there may be 15 percent of cytosine 
is present cytosin base is present then we can calculate all the percentage of all the bases we know that whatever c it should be equal to g so that means there should be in that given dna chain there should be 15% of g also now 15% c and 15% g that means it will be 30% so we have 30% so remaining 70% should be a plus t so we know that number of a is equal to number of t that means here the 35% will be a and another 35% will be t so this is according to the chergaff's rule because of complementary base pairing and hydrogen bond so number of adenine should always equals the number of thymine also in any given dna chain if you add adenine and guanine it should be equal to cytosine and thymine or the ratio of purine to pyrimidine it should be 1 if at all if you know the percentage of one base you can calculate the percentage of all the three remaining bases this is the application of the chergaff's rule i hope you understand this calculation let us see tertiary structure of dna so tertiary structure of dna the dna especially in prokaryotes they don't have any nucleus so in prokaryote the dna is circular and both the ends are attached there is no pre 5 prime end and 3 prime end whereas in human beings in eukaryotes the dna is linear that means our dna present inside the nucleus and it is linear and even though it is linear but highly coiled structure and if you take a single if you extend this dna the length of this dna would be 1.74 meter but it is coiled there is a highly coiled structure tertiary structure so it is compact and placed inside the nucleus if you take a single dna and stretch it it would be 1.74 meter and if you take a human haploid cell one chromosome the number of base pairs present in single haploid cell one chromosome it would be 2.8 into 10 to the power of 9 base pairs imagine how many base pairs are there in one haploid cell it is 2.8 10 to the power of 9 base pairs if you stretch a dna it would be span around 1.74 meter so this dna the structure structure is even though it is linear it is packed it is highly super coiling how this super coiling occurs okay i will show this double stranded dna which is very long but the coiling occurs like this the initial coiling imagine this is a double stranded dna this double stranded dna which is present in helical form wound or coiled around its own axis and this double stranded dna again there will be further coil around a protein so these proteins are called histones so there are proteins here a protein called histones it has got eight units it is a octamer so there are two types of proteins in the chromosome histone protein and non histone protein so these histone proteins actually makes further coiling of the dna because this double stranded dna coiled around histone proteins now there will be again there is further coiling of this structure in a manner called solenoid so like this so there is further folding or coiling this structure is called solenoid now this solenoid again there is further folding it is called non condensed loop and this non condensed loop again it will be folded into condensed loop that mean there is further folding of this dna it is called condensed loop and this condensed loop will be again there is a further conformation it will form chromosomes so this is actually the final conformation it is chromosome so the structure is structure of dna is because of 
large amount of base pairs there will be folding and folding and folding and folding and finally it will be present as chromosomes this is actually tertiary structure so dna package in the chromosome so far we learned the structure of dna so dna is double stranded anti parallel both the strands runs in opposite direction and base pairs are complementary and the double stranded dna the secondary structure is mainly proposed by watson and crick so we call it as watson and crick model if you want any simple notes of this dna structure please visit my website so i'll be posting a simple notes about dna structure the website link i will be put it in description box if you like this video please give thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed so far please subscribe and press bell icon for future notification thanks for watching